Greetings, this is Matt Fiello, Technical Marketing Engineer with the Cisco Cloud Networking Compute BU, and we're back with another Intersight Managed Mode Expert Series video. Uh, we're going to be talking about storage policies, which is part of our IMM server profile policies. So with that, let's get started. Okay, before we jump into details about the storage policy specifically, I'd like to kind of level set uh, with the entirety of uh, infrastructure service server policies. There's 38 total policies in Intersight uh, for UCS servers. Of those 38 total policies, 29 of these policies really apply to Intersight Managed Mode, which is your, your B-Series, X-Series, and uh, FI Managed C-Series uh, servers. Uh, the nine highlighted policies here uh, apply to like standalone C-series and uh, if we reference the NTP policy, uh, it's standalone C-series policy, but also uh, one of the domain policies for your domain profile. So we're not going to be focusing on these highlighted policies with this IMM expert series server policy series. Now let's focus on the storage policy. And as you can see within policies, uh, within UCS server policies, uh, we're going to highlight here the, the storage policy. So what exactly is the storage policy? Well, it's, it's the policy that we're going to use to configure our local disk and virtual drives on, on the server. Uh, as far as IMM is concerned, this storage policy takes the place of the local disk policy and storage profile uh, that you may have worked with uh, in UCS Manager. Now, getting into more detail about the uh, storage policy and creating drive groups in virtual drives, um, it's very configurable, the policy. Uh, you can just select uh, JBOD uh, and have your drives uh, get formatted for JBOD um, for virtual drive uh, creation. You can also, uh, if you have M.2 drives uh, in your server, uh, you can configure those. Now, it's going to be RAID 1, okay? And usually it's going to be a single controller. Um, so you have uh, disk uh, uh, 253 and 254. But if you have a B200 M6 server, that actually supports two controllers. So you could have two uh, M.2 controllers, each with two drives. Uh, and if that's fully populated, then you would also pick up drives 255 and 256. So that kind of explains why you have you know, three different options here. Uh, you'll see that when you craft the policy. Um, for the most part, uh, Option number one is probably what you're going to go with, but if you do have that B200 uh, M6 uh, and you do have two M.2 controllers in your server, um, then that's where these other options could come into play. Um, you also have the ability to just configure uh, your, your M RAID, uh, uh, RAID on your, uh, your front facing drives. Okay, it can be one to six different types of drives. Okay, so create your own uh, groups. Uh, virtual drives, and you can also dedicate either global hot spares uh, can be used by any of the groups or a dedicated hot drive within the drive group itself. And then finally, a very simple option to just, you know, select two or more drives to uh, create a RAID 0 configuration. So I always like to address whether the policy is required. And like most Intersight IMM policies, uh, they're not required. In other words, uh, you can create a server profile and, uh, and deploy that down to a server without a storage policy, fine. In fact, uh, you might choose to do that if you have migrated a server from UCS Manager, it's already got a local OS installed, and you wanna just bring that into IMM and discover it if it's, UEFI boot, um, there's a good good chance, okay, that you're going to find that OS and just boot right up in IO, IMM. Um, but for a new server, a new implementation, new drives, you're going to use a storage policy, okay? You have to configure those with the drive groups, RAID, virtual drives, etc. So from that perspective, you absolutely uh, want to use it. 
As far as recommendations for the storage policy, you're absolutely going to want to know about your server inventory. You have to know what uh, the server's uh, capabilities are from a drive perspective, uh, what uh, the parameters are for those drives in that server. So absolutely check out your inventory uh, before crafting the storage policy. Also, I've included a couple documents here online. Uh, I'll include these in the comments section so they're easier to access. And uh, for the second one there, you're going to notice uh, UCS Manager. Uh, this actually resolves to the IMM uh, uh, example. Okay, so I've alerted the docs team to this. Um, but go ahead and, uh, and uh, access that and know that that is for Intersight Management. So for this policy, I actually have a couple slides of rules and I want to credit my, my good friend and colleague, Scott Gary, for helping me with this. Um, but we got a couple slides of rules here and I think this is going to be helpful for, for a lot of customers out there. Um, for instance, when you migrate a server, uh, any existing storage configuration will remain intact when the server is discovered in Intersight. So if you're moving from UCS Manager um, to Intersight Manage Mode, uh, there you go. Um, we will never delete uh, virtual drives, okay? Um, the only time that you're gonna do that is if you choose to do that manually from within Intersight, um, or uh, we will have a scrub policy in the future and the scrub policy would do that. Um, but that's uh, future to come. Um, so I'm not going to read every single rule, but this is uh, certainly something to reference screen snap keep it at your uh, in your toolbox for when you want to craft uh, storage policies Okay, so here's uh, the second slide of the rules um, which covers uh, m.2 hardware raid uh, so for instance untoggling the m.2 hardware raid uh, function in the policy that will not remove an existing virtual drive. Um, also, uh, in a scenario where, uh, you know, your drive name is the same, but your settings in some way, the configuration of the settings themselves, the RAID level, size, etc. cetera, um, if they don't exactly match what's already on, um, on the drive, then that deploy will fail. Okay. So, uh, you combine that with, uh, you know, a rule about decommissioning, you know, how does that affect a RAID or uh, a virtual a virtual drive? It does not. You can decommission the server, recommission the server. Uh, that will have no effect on uh, your RAIDs uh, uh, or the data on your virtual drive. So, again, the hope is... Uh, for these two slides to be a, a pretty good reference uh, for administrators uh, creating and configuring uh, storage policies and intersite management. So as far as verification goes, uh, you can issue uh, API commands uh, from the API Explorer. Now you can do that from intersite.com forward slash API docs, um, but I want to bring attention to the fact that you, uh, you can log in to the uh, the device console on the FI if you have access. And uh, you can access the server-specific API Explorer uh, to issue these Redfish commands. So uh, in the demonstration, I'd like to show a simple uh, uh, example of that. And as with uh, all IMM Expert Series videos, I'd like to include a graphic slide to just uh, show uh, pictorially how that particular policy in question, the storage policy in our case, um, how it's attached to uh, the server profile template. So in other words, uh, it's a direct attachment uh, to the template uh, or to the server profile. Um, there's nothing embedded, okay? And that's all this uh, graphic uh, shows. Okay, so uh, let's move on with the demonstration. And we are in Intersight, and we are in Infrastructure Service, and we are in Policies. Let's create a policy, and I'm gonna use my filter for UCS Server, and then select Storage for Storage Policy. Now, uh, you can use any name you wish, um, but I like to use a pretty descriptive name, so uh, I've got one prepared here. Basically, it tells me um, all the different disk um, 
um, that I'm going to create, uh, virtual drives, etc., <clears throat> uh, for this policy. Okay, so I'm going to basically boot off of M2, um, but then I'm going to use the front loading uh, RAID controller and front loaded drives uh, to build a couple different uh, uh, drive groups. Okay, in which case I'll have a drive group for drive group one for a file store as well as logging. And then I'll have a bigger drive group that's rated five uh, for my SQL database. Let's click next. And you have a lot of flexibility here uh, as we uh, discussed with the slides. Um, I can use JBOD uh, for virtual drive uh, creation, uh, specify default behavior for unused disk, um, default drive state, um, as well as I can uh, dictate uh, a drive or a range of drives that I want to have a uh, encryption algorithm placed on that to secure that with encryption. But in our case, I'm going to use M.2 for boot, and we have different options, albeit most will probably pick that first option that's default. Um, again, you know, M store RAID 2, uh, M store RAID 1 slash M store RAID 2, that's more applicable to the B200 M6 uh, in that you can have two. Uh, M.2 controllers with two drives a piece uh, in that particular server model, uh, but that only applies to the B200M2. So most people will be picking that M Store RAID one. Um, we're actually going to go ahead and configure um, our M RAID, our front-loaded drives. And in my scenario here, I'm going to have a uh, X210 M6. I'm going to have uh, six front loaded drives so i'm going to add my first drive group I'll give it a name i want that to be raid one and i'm going to dictate uh, the first two drives not going to worry about uh, uh, dedicated hot spares at this point okay and i'm going to create a second drive group Suck RAID 5 for that. This will be uh, the balance of my drives. So it'll be 3 through 6. Add that. So now I'm going to create my virtual drives based off those physical. So my first one will be using that uh, drive group 1. And I'm going to call this guy FS1, file store 1. I'm going to give it a size of 250 gigs. Okay. I'm not setting it to boot because I'm going to boot off of M.2 and I'm going to keep the defaults here. So click add. My second virtual drive, I'm going to keep R1. So group one. I'm going to call this one log. Um, I just wish to use the balance of R1. We've already reserved 250 gigs for a file store. Okay, but use the balance um, for the logs. Again, no boot here and the, and the defaults. So click that. Then finally, I'm going to add a third uh, virtual drive. I'm going to select the R5 uh, drive group. I'm going to call this one SQL DB. And uh, I'm simply going to expand to available for that. And click add. All right, so that is my configuration. Uh, I also could have opted for just simple RAID 0 configuration on drives that have been discovered, but uh, uh, I wanted to build this out for a scenario. So uh, this is just an example. Um, depending on your form factor, your server type, how many um, how many drives you got populated in that server, of course you're going to have uh, a variety of different possibilities here with configuration. But let's go ahead and create that. And that concludes our our demonstration of the uh, of the of the storage policy creation here. Let's move on to verification. 
Okay, so for verification, we're gonna pop over to the device console for the Fabric Interconnect for the domain. And I'm gonna go ahead and log into that. Okay, so now we're here at the system information in the device console, and there's our device connector. If we go to inventory, we can see a, a inventory of all the servers uh, that are part of that domain. It's a small domain for me, it's a lab. Um, but if I go to the pull down uh, for my first server, I can see I can launch the API Explorer. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this is an API Explorer uh, dedicated to the to that server. Okay, and if I click on API Reference, okay, and then click Systems, or actually type systems. I can see all the different commands I can issue to that server. Okay, for instance, uh, if I did not know the system ID, um, I could simply click the first one, systems, and uh, I can see that I've got my system ID listed right here. Okay, but what I really would like to do is let's. Let's go down here to uh, towards the end here is to issue uh, one of these commands to the storage uh, volumes, uh, which will basically give me my virtual drives. OK, and I'm going to kind of do this against the uh, M.2 drives that I have on this server. OK, I'm going to issue this uh, uh, API call against that the Redfish API call. So let me go ahead and type in my computer systems ID for that server, okay? And then the uh, storage ID, which for M.2, it's just going to be M store RAID, okay? And then the volume ID will be zero. So if I click send there, I get a get a success. And if I go down, I can see that uh, I do indeed have a virtual drive there, uh, M store boot ID, okay? Um, correction, boot VD, um, and that can be corroborated here if I go back to uh, servers and uh, go to that server from a hardware perspective, uh, go to that storage controller for M.2 and go look at that virtual drive. So just a way that you can poke around and verify uh, some information uh, on the endpoint if you have any doubts. And uh, I'm not sure if everybody was aware that you could access this uh, via the device console. Um, so hope, hope uh, you learned something there. Um, that completes the, the demonstration. Okay, that concludes our Intersight Managed Mode Expert Series video about storage policies, IMM server policies. I uh, hope you were able to pick up a few tips here to help you craft your policies correctly. Um, stay tuned for more Intersight Managed Mode Expert Series videos. Thank you.